Now that you've decided what engine mount works best for your application, it should be to this stage. With the engine mounted in the bike, no need to tighten it up just yet. Just position it and snug it so it doesn't fall off on you, but yet it's not sliding. And now we're going to install our chain. We'll take the chain apart at the master link right there. That separates it. So you can remove your clutch door, which I'll be doing here in just a moment. That is your clutch release lever and door. We'll pull our makeshift corks out of all of our ports. And I'll tell you why about that here in just a second. We put those in there, if you'll remember, just to make sure we're installing the engine and it's laying on the table. Nothing gets bumped into any of the entry ports to damage our engine. So it's a good idea just to cork those up while you're installing it. But we're going to have to rotate the engine to get our chain on. And if you used paper like I did, it will suck them in the holes, so it is important you have to remove the corks that we made up. All right, well, let me get this door off of here, and then I'll explain how to ex install the chain. Now it's time to get our chain ready. We have to separate it so we can feed it through. You'll have to look on your chain perhaps flip it but you're looking for the master link which is the link that puts your chain together and keeps it together all right what i personally do i use a little pair of channel locks but i'm sure you could use pliers or needle nose pliers if you got them move my hand out of the way I will grab the little stud from the link there, as of such. Squeeze it, and that pops my master link back. Well, it pops my keeper back, and then I'll remove my keeper. A little link plate. Set it to the side. Slides right off there. Now my chain separated. Now we can take it over and feed it through the drive pulley on the engine. For that, we're going to need our 19 millimeter socket and ratchet. For our next step, we're going to take our separated chain Frame there and lay it on our rear sprocket. And then we are going to take this end of the chain. Now you have to be careful here not to pinch your fingers. It is real easy to do. So you got to be careful when installing your chain on your drive sprocket. But we will take our 19 millimeter wrench. Slowly turn our engine, rotate our engine. I do it from the bottom because that is always tightening the nut. If you do it the other way, it can loosen your drive nut. And then you got to retighten your drive nut and make sure it's tight for the future. Because if that comes off on you, you're done moving. All right, now that I have that through there, I'll reinstall my throw out arm for my clutch. Make sure that it is facing to the rear.
I've given myself enough chain to droop across the top of the rear sprocket. So this is what we should look like right about now. Now before I put the master link in the chain and snug up the engine to put it, make sure it's firmly in place, that is why I do the rear sprocket first. Because at this point, I can check to make sure that my chain is 100% straight, not touching the tire, not touching the frame, my brake arm, or any other metal objects. And now that I know that my engine is perfectly straight, and my chain is perfectly straight, and my tire's not rubbing anywhere, Check for all your clearances right now. Now I will tighten up my rear engine mount and my front engine mount to firmly and permanently mount it to my bike. Now that we have the engine firmly mounted, that's tight and our front mount's tight and our motor is solidly fixed to the frame. I like to finish the chain and get the oily part over first. That's my choice. So that's what I do. As you can see, I have some extra chain. You may or may not need that length of chain, depending on your bike, the length of your bike, the size of your bike, how the actual bike is structured, because it will move the engine and you might need the chain extra chain and you might not. So right now, I am personally going to uh, take one of these links apart, shorten that chain, because I don't need that much extra chain. It gives my idler pulley too much chain to try to adjust in the future steps. So I am going to just get my chain breaker and shorten the chain. Now, if you don't have a chain breaker, which presses out one of the pins for the link, you can go to your friendly neighborhood bicycle shop and they should be able to do it for you. Or a motorcycle shop, if someone's near you. And even some machine shops, so you might wanna call around and check. But if you don't have the tools to separate your chain that way and shorten it, those are a couple options. Because if you don't want to buy a chain breaker just for one bike, that's completely understandable. All right, I've shortened the chain that much. What the chain breaker does is press this link out of your chain. So you can shorten the chain to the length of your desired need. Okay, as you can see, I have my chain shortened to my desired length. A little view there. My master link is installed. Brought it in from the back, pokes out the front, put your plate on. And now it's time to put our retaining clip on. Now this is very important about Mr. Retaining Clip. You have to think about it as a little fishy now you want your open mouth of the fishy riding the chain roller coaster backwards. That way, as it rotates around, if it ever should bump something, it doesn't knock the retaining clip off. If you put it on this way with the fishy mouth toward the rear, it could bump something, get knocked off of the chain. Your master link will come apart on you and the next thing you know, your chain's laying in the road and you're stranded or pedaling. So always remember, this is a very important part. Open mouth. The fishy rides the roller coaster backwards. So he's always getting bumped on if he's getting bumped at all. Okay, one last time. We want our retaining clip on our master link with the fish mouth facing the engine. 
if you're doing it on the bottom. If you're doing it on the top of the chain, you want your fishy mouth facing the rear. Always want your fish riding the chain roller coaster backwards. That's just an easy way to remember it. If you're doing it on the top or bottom, there's no confusion. He's on the roller coaster with his mouth facing backwards. The final step here is installing your chain tensioner pulley. Now they're meant to be mounted to the bottom frame. I've seen videos and people in the past that have mounted them up here and had them pushed down on the chain and that is incorrect. It wants to be on the bottom. The only work it does is take the tiny slack out of your chain and guides your chain as it rolls back to your sprocket. It's not doing any super heavy work. The top of your chain is doing all the work because it is pulling you forward. The bottom of your chain is just returning to go back around the sprocket so it can go back upstairs and do some work. So if you put it on the top and face it down, pressing on your chain, that is incorrect. Because when the chain is being pulled tight, it is pushing against your pulley and that is just not what they're designed to do. They're designed to guide your chain, take a little tension or take a little slack out of your chain. You want at least about a quarter inch or so, half inch is fine. You don't want it tight like a guitar string because you're gonna to have to go back after your first tank of fuel in the break-in period and give your chain its final adjustments. So to start off, a quarter inch to a half inch is just fine of slack in the chain. As you can see, the pulley is mounted on the back side. I personally affix it on the low part of the adjustment. That way for the future reference, you still have all that adjustment left to tighten your chain after it breaks in. These are the only two bolts that you have to make sure are super tight. The rest of the kit does not have to be super tight because you'll break the bolts off, so you have to be careful with that. But this has to be super tight and firmly mounted to your frame so it does not fall in and hit your spokes and cause damage to your spokes or an accident to you. So before you tighten that up, it is a good practice to come back and make sure that your chain is completely lined up. Not just the top, but the bottom also. You can't have the this laid in and this chain not on top. They need to be in sync and on top of each other so it flows smoothly, doesn't jump the chain or walk the chain off the sprocket. If you are having those problems when you first start, that just means you have something misaligned and you might want to go back to the drawing board on the chain, take a look at it. But generally, if you practice a little patience, install this correctly, you won't have any chain problems at all. Okay, now it's time to move on to the next step. Installing the carburetor, the exhaust, spark plug, and our other accessories. In this step, we're going to be installing what I like to refer to as our accessories. All the parts are necessary to make the bike operational, but these are the bolt-on things that finish up your bike. As you can see, I've installed the exhaust. And we have clearance from our pedal, so we're in great shape there because we installed our motor properly. Installed the spark plug. It's good to get all the ports closed up just to make darn sure that nothing gets in there. 
Now we're going to install the carburetor. And we have to install our line, or throttle cable, I should say, not line, to our carburetor. So let's get started there, and then we can install our carburetor. And this step is when we install our throttle cable to our slide in our carburetor. Now, I personally go an extra step. I'm going to show you my extra step. I like to do it because the carburetor's clean, hasn't seen gas. Being as you're doing it yourself and you're in the do-it-yourself mode, you have to check and make sure that everything is proper and tightened yourself. Henceforth, the do-it-yourself. Now, I go an extra step when I'm building one to remove the bowl because as you can see, that screw was in there, but it wasn't super tight like it need be. This holds fuel, so you don't want any leaks. So it's nice to give it a check over before you install it. Now I will remove the bowl. As you can see, there's my float. Make sure everything's properly aligned and then I take a wrench and make sure that the jet in the bottom is snug. I have personally throughout the years got one back in the day an occasional kit went ahead and installed the carburetor right out of the box few days later it's leaking gas because somebody at the factory didn't tighten up all the parts properly just like I shown in the first video of how a few of the nuts and bolts right out of the kit might be loose so it's best to check them now you don't have to fool with a gas mess later or have a gas mess at all. So I will snug them. These are delicate, so do not put the super torque to them. Just make sure they're snug and give them a little extra and that's that. Same thing with the drain plug. Just a little snug. It is an aluminum carburetor, it is delicate. All right, now we will install our throttle cable. We will unscrew the top. Inside here is a spring. Your needle for your needle jet set. Your slide and a keeper. Now first we will Slide the cable through the top of the carburetor. Install the spring. And set that to the side. Now we will drop our needle back into our slide as such. As you'll notice, it has a groove on the side. That is where our cable will slide up through. We will drop in our keeper which also has to be lined up with the slot. Hopefully you can see that. Now we will take the cable in on the full slotted side. And you notice it goes up into the barrel slide of the carburetor. We'll keep a little tension on that to reinstall it in the carburetor. Now inside the carburetor, I do not know if you can see or not, on one side or the other, there is a guide pin. Your slot must line up with your guide pin. Do not force any part of this together. It will damage it if you force it together. Notice how easily that went together. And now we will screw the top on. Finger tight for now.
give it a little extra. And as you can see, you can give your cable a little pull. It should freely go up and down. And that is how you install your throttle cable. Now some fuel inlets are pressed in and some of them have a brass inlet just like this one. Now when they have the brass inlet, they screw in. So before I install it, just like I did the bowl nuts or bolts that hold the bowl together, I'll give that just a little extra snug to make sure that no fuel sweats or leaks from it. Now we're ready to install our carburetor on our engine. Now that you have your carburetor prepped and installed, it just slides on the intake as of such. Try to get it as level, straight up and down as you can. It all affects the uh, fuel level in the bowl, so you want that as close as you can get it. Tighten up your clamp right there. That affixes it to the intake and uh, ensures that you don't have any air leaks. Two cycle engines do not like air leaks at all. Okay, now we're going to move on to removing our hand grips and installing our clutch lever on this side and our throttle assembly on that side. Now our bike's finally taking shape. 